Daily Telegram. Welcome back, everybody, to the Temple Daily Telegram Sports Podcast. Josh Weaver, once again, coming at you live on a recording. It's Wednesday night here at the Temple Daily Telegram. I'm with Greg Willie, Daniel Zapata, Marcus Hood. Hello again. Yes. That's actually a Dave Matthews Band song. Hello again. It's pretty good. Good reference. Yeah. We probably have zero Dave Matthews Band fans. Well, now we may have one. Yeah. We have an interesting week. Week three coming up. Two games Thursday night. Three games, actually, if you... If you uh, I want to talk about Hewitt Midway at Colleen taking off District 12 6 8. But Slato is at Austin Travis, and Rockdale is taking on Lexington at neutral site Taylor, which is a big uh, 3A clash. Uh, but um, interesting week three coming up. Temple and Belton also kicking off 12 6 A. Some other interesting matchups. But um, actually, I kind of want to start with Rockdale Lexington, if everyone doesn't mind. Um, Let's do it. Number six, Lexington. Number eight, Rockdale. Uh, Lexington. Uh, beat Rockdale pretty handily last year about this time uh, in a non-district matchup. Uh, And Lexington didn't lose until the fourth round of the playoffs. I think they went 13-1. And And as we all know, Rockdale went on to win uh, the 3A Division I state championship. Um, But, you know, this, you know, it's a Thursday night game. I think it was supposed to be at Rockdale, but Tiger Field is still under construction or, uh, you know, still getting some work done. That's going to debut in a couple weeks. But, um, you know, a good one for folks to see on Thursday night for sure. Um, You know, Lexington uh, beat Troy. Last week, 49-28. I think that one was tied going into the fourth quarter. Uh, And Lexington pulled it out. Rockdale rebounded from a week one loss and beat Caldwell. Rockdale scored 35 points in the first half. But um, that's a game people should go and see, right? Yeah, that's a top ten matchup, so... If I didn't have to work Thursday night, I'd be there. Yeah, you were on the news side Thursday night, right? I am on the news side Thursday night. A lot of people don't know that I switched. This is Marcus, by the way, in case you don't know our voices by now. Everyone knows your voice. I switched between news and sports during the week, so... Yeah, unfortunately, you got to be sitting in the seat instead of sitting in the seat. Right. Right. You, you need a better agent. Broke I know. They negotiate you a better agent. Yeah, if somebody <laughs> out there can contact me. Sports, but, sports Marcus is it's where it's at. Yes. It's right. yeah. Two days a week, Marcus Hood is really happy. <laughs> it's two days off. No, my two days oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so yeah, Rockdale Lexington that'll be a good one. Slato at Austin Travis. Slato, another team that bounced back after a Week One loss. They looked uh, kind of more like themselves. Ran the ball pretty well. Connor Cook had over 200 yards rushing, four TDs uh, last week. Uh, so yeah, so a couple Thursday night games for people. Uh, but just to look at the rest of the schedule coming up Friday night, Harker Heights is at Temple. Copper's Cove at Belton, and Colleen Ellison is at Waco. Those are all District 12 6A games. Uh, Cameron Yo at Gatesville, always a good one. Lampasas at Lorena. Academy at Hempstead. Riesel at Gerald. Troy at Robinson. Rogers at McGregor. Chilton, Chilton at Bruceville Eddy. Moody at Hamilton. Florence at Holland. Rosebud Lott at Rio Vista. Wortham at Bartlett. Granger at Meridian. Brazos Valley Homeschool at Buckholtz, Central Texas Christian at, at uh, San Marcos at San Marcos Academy, Holy Trinity Catholic at Round Rock Christian. Good stuff. Let's jump into twelve six A, shall we? Nine team twelve six A. It's getting underway after two non district games. The only team not playing in that, in that one is Cleed Shoemaker. They drew the the idol game in week three. But um, Harker Heights at Temple, that's kind of an old rivalry, uh, renewed a little bit. Uh, Greg, what does Scott Stewart have to say this week? Well, Stewart, is, uh, he's pretty pleased with the way his, uh, his first teamers, his starters have played so far. Um, not as much about the backups. You know, the, back, uh, the backups got a lot of uh, playing time last week in the second half against Nuevo Leon from, from Mexico. You know, Temple was up 36 nothing at halftime. So, obviously, their starters played a really good first half. I mean, very quick start to that game. I think four touchdowns in the first quarter. Um, you know, his reserves, he was looking for more, more out of those guys. I think they got outscored 14-7 to in the second half. So, that was kind of the biggest, uh, you know, bone he had to pick about – the performance, but when your starters do that well, you're going to want to get them off the field, keep them healthy for district. So uh, overall, it was a good game for Temple, and uh, 
you know, the, the 2 0 start, they've played about as good as they can so far. When you look at the first team units, you know, Jared Wiley, the quarterback, uh, already has eight touchdown passes, six of those to Quentin Johnston. You know, Anthony Jackson has only touched the ball six times and he has three touchdowns. So you got some big play guys that are, uh, you know, doing the job for Temple, and the offensive line has looked really good so far. So that that's a good thing. And then the defense only allowed 19 yards in the first half against Nuevo Leon. So that's a, you know, they've they've gotten some turnovers so far. Their their pass rush looks pretty good. So no real complaints on the Temple side. And uh, like you mentioned, playing Harker Heights, this is a team that you know a year ago was really close to making the playoffs, five and five, three and three in district. They just didn't win some tiebreakers over yeah. the Cove and Ellison. But um, this year, a, a bit of a slow start. You know, I think they knew it's going to be a younger team. Uh, they're playing a sophomore at quarterback, LaPrinceton Dixon, who. Apparently, so far, he's looked pretty good as far as running the ball. He's just he's been forced into some bad mistakes that have, uh, you know, really hurt the, the cause for the Knights. And, uh, uh, you know, I think Heights, their biggest problem is they're not doing enough on offense to give their defense time to rest. And their defense is getting a little worn down by the ground game of, uh, you know, Round Rock and Stony Point, mm-hmm. pretty good team. So, um, yeah, you know, I'd expect Temple to win this game pretty handily at home. Yeah. But um, you never know. The light might come on for Heights at some point. And, Scott Stewart says they're physically and just athletically, they're talented. He yeah. sees it, but it's uh, he calls them kind of a momentum team. You know, as long as things are going well, uh, they're playing pretty well. But then maybe they don't – if something bad happens, they have a hard time reacting and, and staying strong. They were up 16-7 on Stony Point pretty early in that game. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple bad things happen, and then they give up 38 straight points, and it becomes a blowout. So yeah. um, I think it, Temple's just looking to put these guys away early – and, uh, you know, build some momentum for the rest of the district season. Yeah, I've seen Harker Heights play a couple times the last over the last couple of years against Belton, and uh, the Knights usually do have some pretty good size up front yeah. um, on both both sides of the ball, and they like they like to run it yeah. uh, for they sure. They had a real good running back last year, I yeah. believe, that graduated. Yeah. Hodges, and then they, I think the guy they thought was going to be their quarterback this year, he suffered a season-ending injury yeah. maybe in the spring. So they're – there, you know, it looks like they have some pretty good individual defensive players, but as a overall team, it hasn't clicked yet. And yeah. I guess Temple just hopes this isn't the week that they uh, they find it. Right. And you mentioned uh, Harker Heights uh, missing out on the playoffs because of uh, some tiebreakers, and you, you said Coppers Cove was one of those yes. that got in in front of them. And, uh, Harker Heights uh, can not thank Belton for that, I guess, because uh, Coppers Cove and Belton played in the regular season finale, and they square off this Friday night. But uh, uh, the Tigers were up by 21 on a couple of occasions uh, in that game uh, and in the second half, and then the Bulldogs scored 23 straight and, and then kicked a field goal with about 32 seconds left to get themselves into the playoffs. Um, so, uh, yeah, Harker Heights is, you know, they probably remember that, as does Coppers Cove and as does Belton. Um, but uh, Belton and Coppers Cove Friday night at Tiger Field, just like Temple, this is Belton's third straight home game to start the season. Uh, last week against Round Rock, that game was supposed to be Thursday uh, in Round Rock, and then weather kind of changed things, and the game was moved to Friday at Tiger Field. But uh, uh, Belton... We mentioned teams that bounce back after week one defeats. Uh, they looked pretty good against Round Rock last week. They gave up a, a touchdown on Round Rock's first play from scrimmage, but uh, took the lead pretty soon after that and didn't give it back. Uh, the game was pretty close. Uh, it was 21-17 uh, late in the second quarter, um, but Belton went on to score 24 in a row from there and then uh, one by 21. So not a bad showing from the Tigers. Um, and talking to Coach Sam Skidmore this week about Copper's Cove, uh, he, he, he speaks pretty highly about, uh, about what the Bulldogs are doing over there with new coach Jack Alvarez, who took over in May. That's a tough task, t- taking over in May, you know, three months before the season. He didn't even get spring ball, but he took over for Jack Welch after 24 years. Welch was in charge. Uh, but Skidmore, um, you know, he says it's it's still a typical Cove team. They're going to come out and play hard and play physical and uh, take advantage of mistakes. Uh, he mentioned that uh, the offense, which is uh, led by Shantez Simmons, running back, he's had back-to-back 100-yard performances, uh, but they're going to – put out uh, multiple formations and try to get you mismatched on defense. Um, so Skidmore is kind of uh, aware of that this week as the Tigers are preparing. Um, but looking back uh, last week, uh, again, just real quick against Round Rock, uh, Belton's offense really got going, and that was because the ground game uh, 
found a groove. Um, Dean Blonde Monville, he's I would say he's probably six five. Mm, maybe that's in adding an inch, but he's a tall, physical kid. Can Had you just say his name one Dean more time? Dean Blonde Monville. Blonde Monville, that's yeah. what I thought you said. Yeah. I just wanted to hear you say it. Yeah, he, yeah he, uh, he had 167 yards rushing. Uh, Marcus Aguilar added 75, and, and the Tigers uh, rushed for 249 yards. And that opened up the passing game. Obviously, Connor Carruthers had 272 yards passing, 149 of those, and three touchdowns to Denver Holman. But as a whole, you know, Belton's offense looked much better. Skidmore liked the way the offensive line kind of set a tone there, which, you know, is what Belton wants. And they're going to need to do that again against Coppers Co. for sure. I think one thing that's noteworthy about all those yards that Belton was able to put up, that was against a Round Rock team that the week before pounded Harker Heights 36-7. Right. to seven. So that that's not a bad Round Rock team. It usually isn't. I mean, no. They're pretty solid. Um, so the fact that Belton was able to go up and down the field both on the ground and through the air shows that uh, – you know, Belton, they play that complimentary football, yeah. and no one part is more important than the other. They really feed off of each other. Yeah. That's uh, It looked like Copper's Coast played pretty good defense so far right. against Nuevo Leon and then against uh, Maynard last yeah. week. So Held them at six points. and Kind of a nice matchup, the Belton offense yeah. against the Coast defense. Yeah, and, just, and, and speaking of defense, real quick, I mean, Belton, um, they're going to have to uh, – shore up a few things it's not it's not as if they've played bad i mean they played westlake in that first first week and um the chaparral's took advantage of some field position and things like that but uh belton's given up uh 422 yards per game so far uh and uh they're gonna need to find a way to, to kind of corral that a little bit but should we mention who our features are on this week feature sure, stories okay. people can look yeah. for in the paper and uh, coming in friday uh, yeah yeah Temple feature on Hunter Aviles, uh, senior safety, first-year starter, long hair, two That's interceptions it. so far. Uh, trash talker extraordinaire, actually. Okay. They say he's the biggest trash talker in their secondary, which apparently is saying something. And it's the, But it's the way he gets himself going for games. Sure. It's not that he really wants to say anything too bad about the opponent. It's just the way he fires himself up. And, okay. You know. If he's playing, he's talking. So. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like Richard Sherman, long hair, trash talker. Yeah. In the Probably a personal hero of his, yes. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you're going defense. Uh, I'm going offense this week. And I mentioned him earlier, Denver Holman, Belton senior slot receiver, kick returner. 49 yards and three touchdowns last week. Comes from a pretty talented family. Uh, an older sister who's quite successful at softball. A twin sister who uh, is pretty successful in track, and uh, um, he, he's he's had a pretty good start to the season. Had an 84-yard punt return two weeks ago. Uh, nice kid. So uh, that feature will be in Friday, as well as some other features as well. Uh, capsules on all our area games, previews, all sorts of things like that. Our picks, which you know, take them, take them really. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, don't use those as a yeah, guide for any wagering. I mean, just real quick on, on 12-6A though. Um, I mean, uh, I'm excited that it's district. You know, I know, I know some teams might be, you know, two non-district games, man. We're not ready, but okay. Well, everyone's in the same boat. Midway didn't even get to play a second game. Uh, theirs got canceled last week because of weather. But uh, you know, this is this. I'm looking forward to the next nine weeks and eight games of 12-6A. I, I think uh, this is a big game for Belton uh, as far as maybe being a potential district championship contender. Sure. Because I think the past several years they've been good enough to make the playoffs, but it's taken some scrapping toward the end just to make sure they got in. Yeah. I think. It, it, there's almost no chance Midway will be as strong this year as they were last year. I mean, state finalists, they really tore through everybody all year to mm -hmm. the final game. Mm -hmm. I think it, they're showing some signs of maybe not being quite as good yet, at least. Mm -hmm. I think Temple looks strong still. Um, but I think the winner of this Cove Belton game, they maybe sense an early statement that they might have designs on yeah. contending the whole way for the title. Yeah. But we'll, sure. we'll have to see. Yeah, uh, two years ago, actually, Belton. Um, had it defeated Midway, um, had a chance at a share of the district title, uh, but they lost that game in overtime last year. Midway obviously just kind of ran through everybody. Yeah. Belton still finished, you know, right up there in, in second, second, I believe. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, Belton Coppers Cove, you know. I guess if you talk to people around town or around the towns, those are two teams that were probably slugging it out for 
two of those four playoff positions to begin with uh, this season. So, yeah, you're right. It's, it's definitely a big game. But uh, uh, also a big game, and Marcus, you've covered a few of these the last couple of years, uh, Gatesville and Cameron Yo. Um, yeah. You know, it's always always a packed house, it seems, no matter which stadium it's in. And yeah, uh, another one to look forward to, I guess. I think so. And um, both of these teams have a lot of key players back. And I've got to think, that Yo still remembers that game well from last year because yeah. you know it was it was their first loss and a lot would say kind of the start of their downhill climb. They couldn't recover until you know midway through district play, and I know one kid that's probably going to remember that game well is Nico Vargas because it was a it was a close game, and you know it was kind of going back and forth. Gatesville taking the lead, kicked off to Yo with like about a minute and a half left. I can't remember the exact time. Yo drove down the field, got in the red zone they seemingly scored but were flagged for an illegal motion and then put him back to the six yard line Vargas takes a hand off to the left has clear country or whatever you want to call it out there yeah. and Anthony Costas from Gatesville who was back as well was the only guy near him and Costas knew he couldn't tackle him because Vargas is a pretty strong kid so Costas went low undercut him Vargas went high lost the ball Gatesville recovered into the game. Yeah. And Gatesville, you know, they went on a nice little run. Yo kind of went the other direction for a while. And I think both these teams are going to be a lot better this year. I mean, Yo, this will be a, a good game. I want to, if I, if you, like, made me pick, and obviously yeah. y'all do, um, <laughs> in my picks you're going to see that I picked Yo. And I think the Yeomen probably have a little bit more talent right now overall the Gatesville does, but that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean it's not going to be a great game. Gatesville last week, you know, we were talking about this. They, and Cooper told me, Kyle Cooper, their coach, told me beforehand he would probably do this, but I don't think we knew it to this extent, but they had six different guys, six or seven? Six or seven, yeah. Take snaps last week, and two of them were the true quarterbacks. One, um, Kyle Mueller, who we did the preseason feature on, was kind of a, a running type quarterback as the other were more direct snap type things but I mean that kind of you do that you know you're kind of keep the other the defense kind of guessing what you're going to do with all those play formations and that could be one thing that Yo has to look out for yeah, yeah. I think you meant Zach Mueller but yeah. what did I say Kyle but it's Kyle yeah Mueller, but no I understood but even the Nuevo Leon thinks that's using a lot of quarterbacks yeah right <laughs> see uh, <laughs> Marcus let me ask you a question um, with uh, with Yo coming off the bye already in week two. You know, they haven't played in two weeks now. Um, they got the big win versus Mejia in week one. But, um, you know, having the bye so early in the year, you think there's any signs that maybe they're a little rusty or maybe just uh, come out a little slow out the gates? You kind of think that way. And then you can also look at it like, hey, we've had two weeks to prepare for Gatesville. But um, with you, you know, they always – most coaches will tell you the most improvement comes between your first and second game. So – of course, that means there's had a lot of time for Yo to improve, but there could be a little rust. But I think once they get out of, out of the field on Gatesville, it won't matter. They might make some early mistakes, but as long as they can recover from it early, I think it's going to be another barn burner. I got a follow up wild card question for Marcus here, Ooh. who's been around here a while. Better place to cover a game, Cameron Yo or Gatesville? All things considered. Well, <laughs> knowing that we're see. in the press box where food is usually served, what do you think, Mark? That's there the is, among sports writers in Central Texas, there obviously is no better place to go than Gatesville, Texas. Um, even some of these big schools don't put out as good of a spread as Gatesville food-wise. But sorry that you know the fans never get to see that or experience it. But you know the press box for always work. We don't have time to go down to the concession stand, so we have to stay up there. And we are. As sports writers, we're always thankful for anything that the teams can provide. So, rosters. Right. Yeah, <laughs> rosters especially. Accurate rosters. So coaches and um, yeah. athletic staff, I want to always thank you <laughs> for everything y'all do, and Gatesville especially, and, well. Any kind of food is always appreciated. And, like, they bring in reinforcements at different times. Of they the they game, do. Right? It's and not just the pregame, like, if you show up an hour and a half early, it's there. But it, no, if you it's show just, up yeah, they, later, they, it's They're full. bringing food at halftime. They, I don't know if they still do it. I haven't covered a game there this year. But it used to be hot 
donuts coming in at halftime or near halftime. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yo can put out a decent spread sometimes when they bring in pizza and subways. They started, yeah, a couple of years ago bringing pizza in at halftime. Right. They, are, they had the pulled pork sandwiches to begin with, but mm. then there was, like, reinforcements at halftime. Yeah. They're not complaining, so, Yo. Not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course not. No, no, you bring some but, homemade but, yeah. baked goods like Jaysville does. Hey. But I think Yo's going to come out. Uh, fired up! I really, I mean, oh. they, you all. Know, no, I just, I mean, I just think, you know, because they probably felt pretty good about that opening win over mm-hmm. Mahay. I mean, they won pretty soundly, and, and they probably just, I mean, they're like caged right now, yeah. waiting to get out. But and, and I mean, the last couple of years, their bye came week ten. I mean, so it's kind of a, yeah. a, a weird, a weird thing for them all of a sudden to deal with an early season bye. I think that matchup is interesting too, in the fact that. Am I right? I mean, Gatesville is about twice as big of a school as Cameron. I mean, it's about close, 900 yeah. to 450 or something like that. So, I mean, you're talking that's available bodies. That's, I mean, Cameron uh, should be at a little bit of a disadvantage just in terms of available bodies and talent. But we know Cameron, they're always going to put a talented team on the field. Right. But, but Gatesville has its own share of talent and just probably more depth. But uh, it's all about the guys who actually are on the field. Right. When you're when you're as successful as Cameron's been in the past, you know, they're going to put the numbers out there as well. It's yeah. not like just because kids want to play football out there. They want to be part of the winning tradition. Sure. So, yeah, they're there. But, yeah, Gatesville's definitely going to have a lot more kids on their sideline than yeah. Yo will. Yeah. Uh, a team in Yo's district uh, that probably feels yeah. really good this week is Gerald. Good for the Cougars. Kind of feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, basically. Of, and this has been a year of, like, losing streaks being snapped. Yeah. When we talked about it last week. Let me yes, just touch ahead. on that real quick. Yeah. Um, since we asked last week, um, right now the current longest losing streak of the state belongs to El Paso Socorro at 29 games. Okay. There were four teams entering the season ahead of them. They all picked up wins. Wow. And Colleen Shoemaker is at, like, 22 or 23, yeah. so they're not that far behind. Yeah. And so, at least this week, Shoemaker won't lose. Right. But, and Socorro probably can. But yeah. again, no one's trying to take the lead. No, in that, no, no. On those standings. And okay. at being at 29, I mean, in years past, this thing's been up to 40. All the, the other teams. And what was it before this year's? Um, Diamond Hill Jarvis entered the year at 77 yeah. losses. Yeah. And I mean, there was University at 46, Equipment at 42, and Dallas Pinkston at 35. Wow. And so. And they've all won. Yeah. And I mean, it, Socorro may win. Shoemaker yeah. could pick up a win somewhere because, yeah. as we've talked about, Heights may. We're not sure what Heights is going to have this year. In case you missed it, Waco University not only broke that losing streak, but emphatically yeah. 37 yeah. shut out over the Austin Travis Rebels. Who, yeah. Uh, you know, and face, they're, face they're the searching some, Salado team. Yeah. There's some celebration videos but, out there. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, convincing was Gerald's win over, over Florence. I mean, that was. Would they triple him up or something? I don't yeah, know, 48 something? 48 15. Yeah, and Daniel went out there this week. I mean, that's got to feel good. You know, I don't know how many of those kids were a part of, you know, a bunch of those losses, but I'm sure a good majority. But, oh, uh, yeah. No, when I uh, when I got there, it was funny, actually. Um, uh, Coach Amos Davidson over at Gerald. I got there um, a little bit early, like I always try to do, um, but, but I noticed as I was walking to the stadium that uh, players were breaking up and headed to the locker room. So I was kind of, you know, interested, like, what's going on? So I catch up with uh, Coach, and uh, he actually said, he's like, well, we had to end practice a little early because uh, we were getting a little too chippy out there. So uh, <laughs> he says that's pretty typical of them. They're very competitive. Um, this is the first year that um, – they've had enough players come out to where they can have a full offense and a full defensive side and they can openly scrimmage and they've raised the stakes even more this year to where um whoever performs better against the other the losing side has to run extra after practice so Good. you know you don't need a little uh, extra motivation there but you know he was he was really excited as you can expect you know snapping that 18 game losing streak um that stretched back to um, about midway through the 2016 season um but you know they they end that streak with that big win over uh, florence last week and um not only in the streak but um you know uh, davidson he picks up his first win as a head coach for uh, gerald so that's kind of been yeah. lost under over all of this but um 
you know, a lot of guys were really um, excited about that. I talked to uh, Aaron Rodriguez, their uh, junior starting quarterback. He uh, he had 230 total yards, 100 on the ground, 100 through the air, um, also scoring three times. And uh, he just says you can really just tell a difference at practice. You know, he, he admitted, as as will almost any Jero player out there, that last year was, was not good. Um, the energy was not there. The, um, you know, the motivation, the desire just to want to get better and the desire to want to win wasn't there. Um, I had one player actually tell me today that, you know, last season there was just no no urgency whatsoever at practice last year because everyone just kind of knew that winning a game was just kind of too far out of reach. So when you have that kind of atmosphere, it definitely makes it hard to win. Um, you know, but an 18 game losing streak, it, it's no uh, 77 or 47 game uh, streak, but that's still pretty significant. So I know all of those guys are probably glad to get that monkey off of their back. And uh, now they'll uh, focus against uh, Riesel this week, who uh, should be a good matchup. Um, you know, hope uh, Davidson just says if Rodriguez can continue to perform um, at quarterback like he is capable of and like he did last week, and um, if the defense, uh, which also played well in that game against Florence, can continue just to kind of stay together and um, just just prove their consistency, because that's that's one big thing he stressed is that you know they'll they'll put together a couple of good drives and some good series, and then all of a sudden just have a busted play, and it'll kind of deflate the uh, emotions and the morale of the team. So if he just emphasized if the defense can um, stay consistent, um, stay positive, and just everyone prove that they can do their job, which he knows they can, um, that things should start to turn around. They uh, they're excited to get the win, but by no means do they want this to be the only win of the season for sure right you don't want to start a, a new right yeah. Yeah. right after you break the tougher games of weight for sure oh yeah. for sure but, but, so, yeah yeah but it's something to build on yeah, yeah definitely it's winning breeds confidence and at least to hot wins a lot of times so but then the strange thing about gerald that losing streak they had is they played some pretty good football in the last two decades yeah, the, i mean they well, had more good teams than uh, yeah, bad yeah. teams and the two year two yeah. years prior yeah. were they had to have an something remarkable regular right? season yeah, yeah. Uh, when they had the really good quarterback something like around, that so yeah it's just more of an aberration that they you know had this losing streak yeah maybe they're on the way back um you want to touch on rogers real quick i mean yeah. 41 nothing last week over bruce villetti yeah, big one um you know obviously things are going pretty good over there uh uh, with Rodgers and Coach Charlie Roten, I think that's the most points they've scored since he's been there. This is what he's only coached, you know, 12 games there. But still, I mean, he, he was saying how excited he was about, you know, some of the playmakers they had on offense going into the year, and it sounds like they've been able to stay healthy so far. But a big one there, they got uh, – they're at McGregor this week. Yeah. Uh, which That'll be has, a good test. Yeah, That'll be a good uh, test. definitely a big, you know, uh, uh, probably a pretty quick McGregor team that's – put up a lot of points so far 100 i think in the, over the last couple games to start the year but uh, uh rogers looking pretty good overall yeah. so far uh anybody any anything else standing out through two weeks for anybody uh troy and robinson that game this week that'd yeah. be good troy's off to a uh, a good start um they lost last week to lexington i believe yeah right? we, yeah we mentioned them they was tied yeah. 28 all in the fourth quarter before yeah, Lexington. Troy, troy just kind of lost some steam there but you, you uh, hate to say moral victory but i mean the fact that you pushed a state ranked explosive team deep into the fourth quarter is uh after beating something a, to build on at the very a least. week after beating a 4a school exactly right. yeah. well it'll be interesting how this one unfolds i was at that uh, Troy Robinson game last year that one was in Troy and uh, for a long time there it looked like Robinson was kind of running away with it up until halftime and then in that second half Troy came out they scored 21 unanswered um, actually on that last touchdown they uh, they took the lead there with about five minutes left um, Robinson came down uh, tied it up to force overtime um, Robinson got the ball to start the uh, uh, extra time, and uh, they scored on their first possession, and then Troy uh, had a real good shot. I think it was on third down, and uh, the quarterback at the time, Chance Mosley, he just threw an interception. So, um, you know, the Trojans came real close in that one. That was that was one of the best games I covered last year um, by far. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes down. Um, you know, it'll be hard to live up to that 34-28 to 28 overtime game, but uh, we'll see what happens. Troy's on the right path, and uh, Robinson's no slouch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, go. Has anybody else noticed the fair catch rule on kickoffs being different this year with the – if you could fair catch the ball out on the field of play at any point by signaling fair catch and bringing it out to the 25? I haven't noticed that. Yeah, I noticed that in Temple's first game against Cedar Ridge quite, quite often the uh, receiving team – 
uh, I believe it was Cedar Ridge would, would keep signaling fair catch, catching the ball on about the eight yard line, ten yard line, and automatically yeah, it bringing, started at the bringing it out to the twenty. I mean, I, I know. Reading, I, I remember reading that that yeah. was going to take place. I don't think oh, I've okay. seen it in practice because I mean, I've seen fair catches yeah, on yeah. kickoffs, like you know the pooch kicks or whatever. You can call fair catch. You know, right, you get yeah. it wherever, like yes, on the thirty-five right. or something. Does, but yeah. I guess mm-hmm. behind the twenty-five, behind, yeah. you can you yeah. get moved up. Okay. I, I just have I not think it's one of those. I think it's one of those safety issues yes. where you don't because when you when you take a a kickoff. Basically, from the end zone to like the 15 yard line, that's where the streamlined tackles can come, and those yes. guys are going full force at each other. Ear at hole all. blocks right. and stuff. And, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I think that's what it is. And I just got a text message. Apparently, UHB just scored another touchdown against the Whoa. Right. Oh. So. Oh. oh, oh. Just yeah, rubbing, that rubbing was. Rubbing it in now for all those Albright listeners to our uh, podcast, Marcus. Yeah. 91 7 last week. Yeah. UMHB. Uh, I thought Long. UMHB was probably the first team in history to get shut out in its previous game and then score 91 the next you game. You know what? You're right. Yeah, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to find another example. I'll, I'll look for that this okay. week. Mark, will report his problem. findings back to you on next week's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My findings may not be anything. <laughs> wow. Well, I think I might do it for this week. Everyone feel good about what we just did? Yeah, more or less. Yes. Yeah. Works yeah. for me. Yeah, it wasn't a zero, it wasn't 91 either, but, you know, somewhere (laughs) in the middle maybe. But uh, check out Friday's paper. Actually, check out Thursday's paper for a Temple Notebook and then Friday's paper for all sorts of good stuff. Leading up to Friday night's games, once again, thank you very much for listening.